Hey, what's up, family? A while back, there was a test done. Um, California State University, Berkeley. Did this test. They gave a bunch of kids an exam, a quiz of how to put something together. And they gave a bunch of college students the exact same thing. And the college students struggled with putting the object together based on the rules that they subscribed to. And even though they couldn't get it back together based on those rules, or trying to do it according to those rules, they kept trying to get it done. Kids, they tried to do it the way they were told, subscribed by the rules, and then they couldn't, and they started finding ways to get it done outside of the rules. Sometimes you have to get outside of the rules. Sometimes you have to violate the rules. Sometimes you have to think outside the box. I have a lot of Christian friends. A lot of family members that are Christian. And this message is going to be for you. It's going to be for anybody, but more so for you. I'm asked a lot, why is it that so many people are leaving the Christian church? What's going on in America to where the churches are collapsing? What's going on in America to where people by the thousands, thousands are leaving the church every year? And it's easy for people to say, you know what, it's this group's fault. Is this political group's fault? Is this religious group's fault? And normally that's what we do. Anytime something isn't going the way we want it to go, we never really want to accept responsibility or our role in it. So it's easy to blame the Muslims. It's easy to blame Democrats or anybody else, any other group, <clears throat> as to why things are happening the way they are. There are thousands and thousands of people sitting in church, Christian church, that are crying out, that are dying on the inside, and nobody hears their cry. Nobody sees their pain. Nobody sees the turmoil they're going through. And they're told, keep praying. Pray about it. Fast about it. Give it to God. If you are saved, if you're spiritual, you wouldn't be going through that. That sounds an awful lot of like the people in the Bible who told Job the exact same thing.
this is not a preaching video or any of that other. I don't preach. I'm not that guy. I'm just getting ready to have a heart to heart with you. It's just getting ready to get real and raw. You have so many people that have gone to school, <clears throat> that have gotten degrees, and they think that makes them qualified to teach somebody something. They think that makes them qualified to get up and give a word to somebody or to speak into somebody's life or over somebody's life. You're no more qualified than a drug addict right now. I don't care what you think you know. I don't care what paper you have supporting your credentials. If you ain't been through it, you can't speak on it. You can't speak on it. <clears throat> I've worked in the prison system, but I've never been to prison. I can't tell you what prison life is like. I could tell you from an outsider. I could tell you from somebody that's been in a prison housing unit. And I can only tell you based on that one housing unit. Every prison is not the same. Every housing unit is not the same. So I can't speak on that. And so when you come to people and you tell people that have been violated, who've been sexually and physically abused, who've been raped, who've been beaten, to pray about it, to fast and just read your word and got to take care of it. Get out of here with that madness. When you tell people that are depressed, people that are suicidal, that they need Jesus to pray. The old me, the old me, was wanting to slap the taste out of people's mouth for stupid stuff like that. That's so cruel to say. It's cruel, it's heartless for you to tell somebody who's gone through hell, through something you have never experienced, to sit down and pray about it. To give it over to God. That if they were real Christians, they wouldn't be going through that. They wouldn't be dealing with that. You have abused your position. You're not fit to be a leader. You're not fit to speak into somebody's life. You just invalidated and minimized everything that that person had gone through. You invalidate people. You minimize the struggles that people have when you never had that experience and you try to emotionally and spiritually manipulate them into being who they ain't. So you don't want them to talk about their problems. You don't want them to talk about their struggles. You want them to be like you. You want them to hide their pain and their suffering so you don't have to deal with it. Why are people leaving the churches in masses? Because the people in charge of the churches have failed in their responsibilities. They have failed in their duties. They're derelict of their duties. They're not fit to be in those positions. You can't tell me as a person to come talk to God and to pray about it when I've been abused as a kid, sexually molested. Ain't nothing in the Bible telling me or showing me how to deal with that. 
I, I've resolved those issues. I'm just speaking on behalf of other people that have gone through that, that are still struggling with that. Women that have been raped. Women that have done what they were supposed to do as a spouse and were still physically beaten. Women that have done everything that they were supposed to do and they were cheated on and abandoned by their spouse. This is easy to sit back and talk about what you're supposed to be and how you're supposed to be as a Christian when you ain't been through nothing. You can't tell me nothing. You shouldn't be saying nothing to anybody else because you ain't got nothing to say. If you ain't been through it, keep your mouth shut. The best you could do for those individuals is pray for them and try to be there for them. Other than that, you ain't got nothing to say to them. You shouldn't have anything to say to them. It's people like you that are running everybody away. Because of your arrogance and your self-righteousness in making everybody else feel bad because they're not like you. Because they've gone through some stuff. And you haven't. And because you haven't, you can't relate to them. And because you can't relate to them, you don't want them around you. You only want people around you like you. Because it's comfortable. You could keep your comfort. But I promise you this. Your churches are going to keep dwindling. I promise you this. You're going to keep running people away from the church. I promise you this. People would not see you as the pillar of light or the beacon of light, the beacon of hope, the beacon of love that you're supposed to be. I promise you this. People will keep seeing the church as a hypocrite entity that's not a hospital aimed at helping those that have gone through some things. It has now become a social club, a frat party. That's all it is. It's no different from the Sadducees and the Pharisees. They knew the word. But they didn't live nothing. Their life wasn't a testimony to anything. Again, I'm not no preacher. I'm not none of that stuff. I'm just somebody answering a question. Why is it that the churches are falling? Why is it that people are abandoning Christianity? Because people are looking at the teachers and the preachers and the ministers and the pastors in Christianity and they see the hypocrisy. They see that nobody really cares about them and their issues. Nobody's getting to the heart of the matter. Nobody's helping them get past their pain and their suffering. Because see, praying about it don't change nothing. It don't. You've got to go through some things. And it's uncomfortable. It sucks. But until you're able to have those heart-to-heart -heart conversations with yourself and why you're in those positions, because most of you are in those positions because of ego. And it ain't got nothing to do with the heart of the people. I love you guys. Peace.